Welcome back. Ancient tombs are, of course, a vital source of information about the distant past. The scale and style in which they were built, the relics they held, the identities of the people they hold, and so on, can reveal a lot about the events and customs of times long gone. Often, though, a great deal of detective work is required to interpret a tomb, its significance, and the role played by its occupant in history. In 1978, some farmers working in a field in a village in Haiyang in Shandong province stumbled upon an ancient tomb. The experts who examined it decided it was the last resting place of a noble of the spring and autumn period, more than 2,200 years ago. Later in the same area, more tombs dating from the same period were discovered. Among the vast quantities of priceless cultural relics they yielded were three pieces of bronzeware, which have been listed as state-level cultural relics. They were found in number four tomb, which also contained seven bronze cooking vessels and nine sets of chimes, indicating that the tomb may have belonged to a king. As early as the Zhou Dynasty more than 3,000 years ago, China's central plain was home to a fairly advanced civilization. However, the Zhao Peninsula in the east was still quite barbaric. The Zhou imperial court sent a man named Jiang Ziya to establish a new state at a place called Linzi. Qi, as the state was known, would act as a buffer against the barbarian tribes living in the east of the peninsula, an area that was called Dong Yi at the time, meaning barbarian land in the east. It was here that the king's tomb was discovered. But this raised questions about why he should have chosen to be buried so far from the political center of his kingdom. The ancient tomb group is located to the north of the village. According to the locals, there was originally a low hill here where they would regularly uncover ancient arrowheads and parts of carts when they were farming. Consequently, they believe an army had once been garrisoned in the area. In the 1970s, as part of an irrigation project, the villagers removed most of the hill. Today, only a few mounds remain but it is still possible to imagine the vast scale of the hill. The villagers say the mounds show clear signs of being created by humans. The quality of the earth is very different from that in the surrounding areas. This led the experts to conclude the hill might have been part of an ancient tomb group. Between 1978 and 1985, Archaeologists working on the site discovered three ancient tombs. They unearthed large quantities of relics, including more than 20 pieces of bronzeware. Among them were delicately designed and produced sets of chimes and cooking vessels. Evidently, whoever had been buried in the tombs must have been nobles of the highest rank. In 1994, a villager doing his regular farm work beside the village paths found a piece of coffin wood protruding out of the earth. Realizing it might indicate the presence of an as yet undiscovered tomb, he reported what he had found to the authorities. A team of archaeologists was immediately dispatched to the village to excavate the site. In what became known as the number four tomb, they discovered a coffin four meters long and three meters wide, along with a set of nine chimes. In ancient times, chimes were widely used on various occasions, such as sacrificial rituals, banquets, the start of a war, and even during eating. Chimes started appearing in sets of nine at the beginning of the spring and autumn period. They were regarded as a status symbol at the time. 
Wan Bo, a famous scholar of the Tang Dynasty, wrote an article in which he referred to sets of chimes and cooking vessels as the two symbols of the true noble. The experts also discovered that the nine unearthed chimes play different notes. This was extremely rare and further indicated that the person buried in the tomb was of extremely high rank. As the excavation progressed, something even more remarkable was discovered. Seven bronze cooking vessels. According to the royal etiquette of the Zhou dynasty, a king should be buried with nine cooking vessels. The ruler of a dukedom was entitled to be buried with seven cooking vessels. Historical records reveal that in the latter years of the spring and autumn period, Duke Ling Gong of Qi conquered nearly all the barbarian tribes on the Jiaodong Peninsula. So the territory of Qi extended as far as the east coast. This raised speculation that the king of Qi himself might lie buried in the tomb. But the kings of Qi were normally buried in the capital Linzi. Why would a king be buried somewhere so remote? The answer might be found in the articles buried with him. It seems the man buried in the tomb was not a king, but a man who was prepared to violate royal etiquette by upgrading his own burial. In the excavation of number four tomb, archaeologists discovered two more large bronze vessels. They bore inscriptions, which would usually be a record of the identity and status of the person buried. Research on these inscriptions revealed that the two bronze vessels come from the state of Chen, which occupied an area roughly equivalent to what is today Huaiyang in Henan province. This is a long way from Haiyang, which left the archaeologists wondering what was the relationship between the person buried in the tomb and the distant state of Chen. Records of his Dorian describe how Chen Wan, prince of Chen, escaped to Qi in the wake of a coup. At the time, Chen was admired for his advanced bronze forging techniques, and so Huang Gong, king of Qi, put Chen Wan in charge of bronze making. Chen Wan, anxious to conceal his identity, changed his name to Tian. But all the time they were in Qi, the Tian family harbored ambitions of ruling the kingdom. Eventually, Tian He, the eighth generation descendant of Chen Wan, succeeded and drove the king of Qi out of his own territory. The Tian family, backed by the feudal landlords, established themselves on the throne of Qi. This is the symbolic historical event that marks China's transition from a slave owning to a feudal society. Chen Wan, after he led to Qi, married the daughter of a high official. Four generations later, Tian Qi had become one of the most powerful nobles in the land. In secret, he introduced enlightened policies in the territory where he held sway, with the aim of winning the common people over to his side. This led Tian Qi into a political game with the other nobles of Qi. But he emerged victorious and was named Prime Minister. His son, Tian Chang, continued his father's work and eliminated the most influential of the rival noble families. In doing so, he expanded the territory under his control across half of Shandong. Thus, the Zhaodong area was brought within the domain of the Tian family. Tian Chang surrounded himself with concubines. 
During the time his son Tian Pan was prime minister, he had more than 70 of his brothers serving in the major posts of government. The Tian family were now the de facto rulers of the state of Qi. The seven cooking vessels and nine chimes excavated from number four tomb suggest that a member of the Tian family was buried there. Although he was prime minister, he might not have full control over Qi, so he was obliged to be buried some distance from the capital. The speculation was that the tomb contained the body of either Tian Qi or Tian Chang. Tian Qi became prime minister of Qi four years before his death. It was around the same time that his original home, the state of Chen, was wiped off the map by the state of Chu. There is considerable historical evidence that the prince of Chen fled, carrying with him a number of priceless royal bronze wares. But there is no mention of where he may have fled to. Finally, the careful excavation and research seem to have revealed the identity of the person in the tomb. But Tian Qi, by having himself buried with the seven cooking vessels and a set of nine chimes, was placing his family in real danger of punishment perhaps even death. But evidently, his dream of being seen as the king of Qi outweighed such concerns. As the acknowledged leaders of the feudal landlords, the Tian family eventually achieved their dream, and Chinese society took a big step forward. The group tombs in Haiyang are a precious source of information about a certain historical period. They're also testimony to a dream of kingship more than 2,500 years old.